Flat Balance has started a series of videos that will cover 16 emergency landings that supposedly prove the Earth is flat. Ooh, we're in trouble now. So, there I was, just enjoying my morning coffee and flicking through the old YouTubius Maximus, when I came across a video titled 16 Emergency Landings Proving Flat Earth. Well, as scary as it is, <laughs> I had to see this. So, hello boys and girls, I'm Limey Play. First, I want to thank you for sparing some time to view my video. I really do appreciate it. Second, I have to apologize. I'm just too tired and too worn out to dive into this rabbit hole alone. So yes, I am taking you all with me. Um, it could be dangerous. I mean, these people will try so hard to convince you that Earth is flat, but I do have faith in you. Um, I know that you have real world logic and reasoning and it should be enough to keep you from the dark side. And heck, if, if you're here, then you must have seen enough of this just sheer bollocks to now be carrying an oven mitt down the back of your trousers like a fucking gun just to be ready for emergency face palming. However, just in case, disclaimer, Lime Play is not responsible for the sheer amount of stupid in this video and will not be held accountable if you face palm a dent into your face, nor will it be his fault if your sides split from laughing too hard. Lastly, the footage you're about to see is real. These people actually believe this. There has never been a more compelling reason for kids to stay in school. Well, that took a while. Sorry, I guess I'm just stalling. I mean, the truth be told, I don't like this. It's like being the, the lead guy or girl whilst walking through a haunted house. And I'm not talking about one of these fake Halloween haunted houses. I'm talking about a real thing. When you just walk in along slowly, a little hesitantly, and then, boo, something jumps out of you that just defies all logic and reasoning. But enough. I can't stall it any longer. Or can I? Matt Powell has a giant inflatable banana in his backyard, which he names... Dr. Peel. <laughs> ah, that never gets old. So, let's look at Flat Balance and his first proof that the Earth is flat. Chapter 1. The 1988 Australia Bicentenary Gold Cup. Way back in the 1980s when I was young, I worked for an airline. I'm not going to give too many details about the job, but I worked for this airline and I had knowledge of flight routes and paths that I acquired while working for them. I was also a soccer aficionado. In 1988, there was a soccer tournament in Australia called Australia Bicentenary Gold Cup. So I'm not going to play the whole story here, but the general gist of it is that, you know, whoever wrote this uh, worked for the airport and was also part of the Brazilian national team, I, I think it seems, um, you know, that went to do this cup. Now, he doesn't say that he was a pilot, uh, just says that he worked at the airport, so we don't know exactly how much info he has on, you know, flight routes and great circle routes, uh, you know, anything like that. The The general gist of it is that some some people were in like Rio and like other parts and they end up, they, they all end up, so I guess they made their way to Santiago, Chile to then fly to Sydney, Australia, but the flight stopped off in Los Angeles. So we'll, we'll hear a bit more about it right now and, uh, you know, just but I'm skipping a few paragraphs because it's a lot of it is inconsequential and it's more about the football side of things. All right, so let's get back to it. I remember questioning it and talking to my friends at the airport. Los Angeles? But Australia is just a shot across the Pacific on the globe. Why LAX? I just had to accept that because in 1988, there was not much one could do to find information about flights and I didn't have a flat earth map, like the Gleason's flat earth map that I could compare with the globe. I had never heard of a flat earth before. Besides, for me, at that time, there was nothing more interesting than soccer. Could the Brazilian national team have just taken a regular passenger flight? The picture below is from Boeing 747-400, which flew the route to Rio to Los Angeles. Varric. An extinct Brazilian airline was the official carrier of the Brazilian soccer team for some time and they had a flight Sao Paulo, Rio, Los Angeles and then on to Tokyo. Varic flight 832-833. Could it have been that flight that carried the Brazilian team to Australia? Was it a chartered flight? Did it fly straight from Los Angeles to Sydney? I just couldn't find any information on that. Please compare this flat path on the globe and on the flat earth map on image 02 on the next page. Had I had a flat earth map back in 1988, as I do have one today, I would have understood clearly what went on back then. Even when comparing this flight on a Mercator projection, as in the picture below, 
this flight path still won't make sense on a globe. So the first flight we're looking at is the famous flat earth argument that if the earth was a globe, why would this flight that is going from Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia, stop off in Los Angeles. Now I realized, you know, after watching this video back a bit as I'm trying to piece it all together that, you know, he's talking more about Rio and possibly Buenos Aires. I, you know, I got a bit confused with it all, but if we look here, all of these locations are reasonably close and they do not affect the uh, story at all. Um, so I'm sticking with Santiago, Chile, because that is the like the main one that, that Fluff seem to argue about. No matter how many times you show them, there is a direct flight from uh, Santiago to Sydney. Uh, that, I don't know, they just seem to keep pretending that they don't exist. So, <laughs> let's take a look. The answer is amazingly simple if only flat earthers would research things thoroughly instead of finding something that they think proves their claim and then stopping their search. First, LATAM and Qantas both have direct flights from Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia that take on average 13 hours and 22 minutes. However, most people like to save money where they can and so take flights that have one or more stops on the way. These stops normally involve one of those particular airlines stopping at one of their hub airports or a popular connection destination. These extra seats are sold cheaper or you know just to fill up the planes. That's normally giving a multi-stop flight for less money than a direct one. There are, you know, are also more of these flights as they cover more destinations for their customers. So some direct flights may not be, uh, you know, may not happen very often. Like Latam and Qantas, for example, they only do the back and forth from uh, Santiago to Sydney once, uh, once every day. Here we can see the direct flight as well as the flight with a stop in Los Angeles on a flat earth map. Although both options almost follow the exact same flight path on this map, the stopover op option has a time of 25 hours and 30 minutes, almost twice as long as the direct flight. This just would not make sense unless the plane was only cruising at a few hundred miles an hour, which just doesn't happen. Whereas if we look at the flights as they occur in reality, the flight times and routes fit perfectly. Uh, his next video talks about several different flights, which I'll try to address one at a time. We'll just see how long this video goes on for. It may end up becoming uh, more than one video. Chapter 2 China Airlines Flight 008 As I was constantly to searching for news about politics in 2015, I missed much of what was going on besides that subject. One thing that made the news in October of 2015 was the story of a woman who gave birth during a flight from Taiwan to Los Angeles, forcing the pilot to make an emergency landing in Alaska. Well, let's talk about the story first and then we will focus on the flight path. After I had enough information about the origin of the flight and the people involved in it and the reason why the pilot had to make an emergency landing in Anchorage, Alaska, I then took a look at the flight path and compared flights on a globe model versus a flat earth model and got my own conclusion. Although this emergency landing took place at around the same time the flat earth videos were popping out of my YouTube suggestion feed, I did not immediately connect the dots. Only after I did my own comparison and research that those things started making sense to me. Image 02 on the next page demonstrates the results of my research. So the first one addresses a pregnant lady who is flying from Taipei, which is the capital of Taiwan, to Los Angeles in the United States. Um, the lady was heavily pregnant, probably shouldn't have been flying, but she did sort of lie about, um, you know, how far she was uh, in her in her term. And um, she ended up going into labor during the flight. Now, given the position that the plane was in, they had to divert to the closest airport, which was Anchorage, Alaska. Now, many flat earthers use this flight as an argument against the globe model. But looking at this picture, we can see it may be questionable, although if we plug the measurements in, we can see that Anchorage was the closest airport for quite some time. But this is not how routes work in reality. Remember that the planes are flying around a ball and so are traveling along great circle routes. These are great circle routes, which are the shortest distance between two points when traveling along a spherical object and are correct to within 0.5% error margins, so are highly accurate. As we see on the image provided by Google Maps on the prior page, the blue line shows the two cities, Taipei in Taiwan and Los Angeles in the US. 
The flight on the globe should have been somewhere above the Pacific Ocean and then according to several news outlets, it was diverted north toward Anchorage which would have taken the pilot as long to reach Anchorage as it would have taken him to reach LAX if he just kept the plane flying. So this argument is blatantly false, Anchorage was clearly the closest airport by a large distance. Or the pilot could have just landed the plane in Hawaii since common logic is that Hawaii is located between US mainland and Asia. Here I have added Honolulu's international airport to the flight routes. As we can see, although Honolulu is closer to LAX than Anchorage is, Anchorage was still the closest airport for a large portion of the flight from Taipei to LAX. There is also the chance that they checked with Honolulu as well, but that they were unable to receive the flight. At the end of the day, Anchorage was still a closer option than LAX and fits perfectly with our globe model. Again, this is just misunderstanding on the part of the flat earther. Hawaii is provably in between Asia and North America, but may not appear in the flight's on-screen map due to positioning. As always, flat earthers do not research properly or nearly as much as they should. Well, that's going to be where I call it today. Um, that's, yeah, definitely enough for me. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do the rest of this video. Um, it looks like his second video says chapters two through five. So we've done one of them. So I imagine there's three more flights on there. Aside from that, thank you guys so much for uh, checking out my video today. If you enjoyed it, please do like and, you know, leave a comment. Let me know if there's any ideas you have for videos as well. I'm always up for that. Or you can pop over to my Discord server, join that, and, uh, you know, we have a chat about content there as well uh, my other social media links as well as the discord server are linked in the description if you'd like to support the channel uh, as well as my gaming channel it's all one big sort of bundle um, which I will link the gaming channel right here now there are patreon and PayPal links in the description as well um, and I do have a separate game area in my discord server for chats about that as well uh, thank you so much for checking the video out again I <laughs> really can't thank you guys enough for you all of your support uh, I have been Limey Play Take care of each other and stay safe.